people who make their living out of cleaning murder scenes, accidents and the like. What is the worst thing you have experienced in your career? Dad had to saran wrap a guy's intestines back into his body once. Dude had surgery and pushed too hard on the toilet. Dude was fine. According to dad. Just holding himself together on the toilet while a group of firefighters tried to figure out why TF they were sent instead of paramedics. Update when he pushed too hard he opened a scar on his torso ab area and it all fell out onto his lap. Should have mentioned this when I wrote the post. Medic here. First responder to a motorcycle collision. Guy who crashed was a friend. He'd been torn in half and almost decapitated. Had to walk away from the scene and let my driver and another crew handle it. Think about it daily. I worked for a restoration company rarely cleaned up after dead bodies. And I got the only one during my tenure at the company. The lady had passed probably two weeks before anyone did a wellness check. So the entire room was contaminated. By the time I got there to do the cleaning. There were so many dead flies and maggots on the floor it was truly shocking. We rolled the carpet and carpet pad up that was in the room. And all of the dead bugs sounded like a rain stick you get in a cheap tourist shop. That sound sticks with me after 3 years. I posted this on another thread so just copy and pasted it but this was one that I had to do. Clean up after a murder. It was a rehab house for ex-cons. 4 bedroom house with communal bathroom and kitchen. Sunday morning and guy is in his room listening to music pretty loud. Guy B is in the kitchen cooking his breakfast. B knocks on A's door and tells him to turn it down. There's a small argument and B returns to his breakfast and A turns his music up. So B grabs the biggest knife in the kitchen. Kicks in A's door and stabs him through his left shoulder. Entering by his collarbone. A runs out of his room. Across the landing. Down the stairs. At the front door. Back inside. Back up the stairs and collapses on the landing. When I got there it was like a scene from a movie. Walls and ceilings. Everywhere A had been were caked with blood. Apparently after B stabbed him. He returned to cooking his breakfast. There was a half eaten breakfast in the kitchen when I got there. When I was a bartender. A couple of clients told me the worst part about the job is cleaning melted bodies. I don't know the science behind that. But from what I understand is if a body stays for a while in a certain condition of temperature and humidity. It melts. And those guys have to remove that person's remains in buckets. My reading comprehension left me for a moment and I thought you were saying that bartenders would occasionally have to clean melted bodies and was trying to figure out what kind of situation would lead to that. I work in the ER. I was told by someone that works for a funeral home that they had to go get a girl that had overdosed and passed away. They said she had her breasts augmented and was pregnant. Turns out she overdosed while taking a bath and had decomposed enough that her breast implants in the fetus were floating around in the water. Then I clocked out and had lunch. Friend of mine does this. His worst was an elderly woman who died in a bath. Skin falls off like long cooked meat. I had a great uncle who helped clean up the bodies left behind by Hurricane Audrey in 1957 and he said that the smell persisted in his nose 4 weeks after. It got so bad that he went to the doctor to see if they could do anything and they clipped all of his nose hairs and the smell went away. It was explained to him that the smell had soaked into the hair but I don't claim to know the validity of that statement. The hurricane hit South Louisiana in June of that year and most of the bodies recovered were found in the salt water marshes that cover the area. So it's safe to assume that they were in an advanced state of decay. I've heard it said that the smell of the decomposing bodies was so bad that the alligators would actively avoid the areas but I don't know the validity of that either. I'm not a crime scene cleaner. But we used to transport coroner cases as part of our job. The elderly man who blew his head off with a shotgun in a third story attic in the summer was rough. He'd been there a few weeks. We could smell him when we got out of the truck at the street. Blood spatter covered every inch of the walls in that room. As did the flies. Had to scr pay some dried brain off the floor into a container for the coroner. When I went to roll him into a body bag his bloated. 
slimy greenish blue skin slipped off of him and I was left holding a large sheet of it with both hands. The worst part was his wife had passed a few weeks before. They had been one of those married for 60 years. Inseparable couples. He just couldn't take it. That broke my heart. Other guys were puking. I cried silently. Working for a tow truck driver that get the calls after crashes. The worst one for me was a family of six coming back with over 10 pizzas for a baseball team. It was a head on with a tractor trailer, 18 wheeler. The ambulance took the bodies away of course. Everyone died but one little guy. There was so much blood and vomit. Diapers. Toy dolls covered in blood. The pizza was everywhere inside of the car like too thick on everything and all over the road. There were so many backpacks and things just covered in pizza blood. It is hard to even describe it to this day. It was oozing out all over the road and was like an exploded pizza pocket. Everyone that was waiting in the traffic jam looked horrified. My ex-partner's cousin used to do this. According to what I heard someone committed suicide from the 24th floor and she had to chip frozen brain matter off the railings leading into the building. Also how she met her husband. They both were working the same job. I spent some time with the coroner to shadow for school. They were showing me different cases and going over them. Pictures included. The one that seemed to emotionally bother this particular guy the most was a scene where a father was coming home and pulling into the driveway. His daughter, three years old, was running to greet him and he didn't see her and ended up running over her head. The pictures were heartbreaking enough. I can't imagine what the dad went through when he saw her like that. There was another one that had three bodies. Some guy killed his wife, his affair partner and her daughter. Put them in a shed in the middle of summer and left town. They were found three weeks later. Basically piles of putrid slime. Maggots, like fill 10 gallon buckets full. And bloated body parts sloughing off as they tried to bag them. The murderer had a pilot's license and has never been caught. The deck on broom smelled for months after that. One of my first jobs after moving I did this. And the job that had me walking wasn't even a scene as described. We did all types of hazmat cleans and the worst was actually a couple went on vacation and came back to backed up skeptic. Think about one foot thick hard dried out crusty skeptic waste spread throughout the entire first floor of a house. Not going further into detail here. Was nasty. Septic. Not skeptic. Break and mobile. So yeah. Comma. Man. A family friend was a first responder to a scene where a young woman committed suicide by running onto a busy highway at night. A semi truck hit her and essentially her body exploded. He described the scene of just picking up pieces scattered across the road in the shoulder. Edit. This got more attention than expected. The poor driver of the truck thought he'd hit a deer. And didn't know it was a person until he saw the tattered clothing on the road. This happened probably 12 years ago. The story stuck with me because of how cavalier he spoke about it. Sadly. This wasn't the worst call he'd ever had. And there were a few he refused to speak about. Not in cleanup. But I have a friend who is a paramedic. And he said the only call that ever really got to him was a call for a large overweight woman who had a fecal impaction who was they found laying on the floor naked and puking up. So she was so full of poop that it was coming up the other way. Teen girl had to be pieced back together. Steering column went through her chest like a straw through a slice of cheese. Had to put the hamburger heart back together. I'll never be able to put my straw through cheese slices again. Not exactly what you asked but my husband's uncle worked as a paramedic firefighter for many years. The accident that disturbed him the most, warning, involves children, was getting a call about three boys locked in the trunk of a car. From what I can remember. The kids were playing around outside during the summer and got into an old non-running car out on someone's property. He had to pry the trunk open. And unfortunately all three had passed. He said that day took a lot out of him and he still can't get the images out of his head. 
I'm so terrified of bothering anyone that as I read all of these I kept thinking stupid things like I hope when I die I turn the AC up really high so I don't turn too much into goo for other people to clean up. Invest in relationships. People will be checking on you and you won't hit goo level. As a FF medic. Called to an industrial accident. During bridge highway construction. A worker got caught up in an auger and sucked into about a 12 inch hole. Could make out a bit of his hard hat but I don't think it helped. I had a girlfriend who did social work. Helping newly released convicts re enter the job market. She'd gotten one con who was very nice a job in a factory making decent money. She found out a while later that he'd been killed in that factory in a horrible accident. He'd been feeding fiberglass into a machine that tore up mats of it into fluff. Something like that. But it was very dangerous. There were tooth rollers that forced the fiberglass in. Something went wrong. And the guy somehow reached over one safety bar. And around another. And got his hand grabbed by the rollers. His entire body was forced though a very narrow slot. Like one stroke 16 inch. I work in disaster cleanup including biohazard scenes. Sadly it's only gotten worse since the Rona. Suicides have spiked. Murder is up. Old folks dying at home alone and people not realizing for longer because they don't want to give grandma and grandpa the virus, you would think they'd still pick up the phone and call? Close bracket. They are all awful. From the man who murdered his mom with a weight. To the man who shot himself in the head then walked all around the house bleeding everywhere. To the man who shot himself and we had to scrub blood off the baby bassinet to the old man who died in a senior independent living facility who had no furniture and just a sleeping bag on the ground with garbage and feast stains everywhere. He wasn't found for some time. That one really bothered me a lot. So I have two I'm an aircraft rescue firefighter when I was in the marines. We were in Thailand with some F-16s and one decided to smack the ground during a gun run training. No time to eject. During recovery we were told to pick up any pieces of the pilot we found and put in a bucket. I found his cheek and eyebrow. 2. A few years ago there was a serial killer in Houston. We got called to a welfare check of a woman that was supposed to meet her family for a family reunion. She never showed. We get there and we find her, early 70s in age, tied to her bed naked with a pillow over her face and our head. She had been dead for 2-3 days. Bloated and grey green. If anyone lives around Houston. My brother's friend was a paramedic and quit his job after seeing this. It was the last straw and he couldn't do it anymore. Some horrible person left their baby and dog in a parked car to go shopping. It was hot. They both died. But the dog panicked and chewed up the baby's face. Sorry for the image. Not a remains cleaner nor is this my story. This was dad's friends. Friend. The guy's father killed himself with a shotgun. The father shot himself inside while all the family were outside playing. Due to the family not having money or the lack of life insurance policy the father had. They could not afford the cleaner. So the kids and the mother had to clean up the father's remains inside the house themselves. My buddy picked up bodies and was immune to it until he had to pick up the body of a child who died of cancer. He said the cries of their parents were too much for him. He quit the next day. Not me but an acquaintance is a EMT. He responded to a suicide where the guy decided to kill himself by running head first into a spinning table saw. The guy ran face first into the blade but didn't die. They could tell by the blood trail that he had to take a second run at it to finish the job. He told me he didn't think that much blood could come out of a single person. They likely had to rip the walls down to the studs to get rid of all the blood. The saw sent it flying everywhere. My dad used to work in safety at an airport. One day he came home and told us about an incident at work where a guy somehow found himself on the runway and ran into the path of a plane and he was sucked into the engine. I was too young at the time to see any of the photos but many years later. I'm cleaning up the study room and found the old files with the photos of the cleanup. It was basically mush everywhere and there were photos of the biohazard team using shovels to scoop up remains. 
Another one I saw was an elderly couple were crossing the highway to get to an event on the other side and they were ran over. Not once. Not twice but over a dozen times by drivers who just didn't notice anything on the roadway. They were also shoveled up and put into bags. The sad part about this one is that there was a pedestrian walk over just about 100 meters away from where they were crossing. Obligatory not who is being asked. But was a property manager for a while. Had a call one midsummer Friday morning about flies. I hope isn't dead. I thought. A few hours later another tenant called about the same thing. 3 p.m. that afternoon I found out had hung himself on the indoor communal staircase. All the other tenants use the outdoor stairs to access their apartments. The property owners refused proper cleanup because they wanted to preserve the flooring that had been soured by four days of decomposition in mid-Atlantic heat. I went in on Monday after the air scrubbers had been going for about 36 hours. It smelled like cheese pizza. I will never forget that smell. I don't do cleanup. But the other day I had to do CPR on a guy who bled to death out of his nose. Something about it being a nosebleed was really disturbing to me. Looking at his blood covered face while doing compressions. Not a first responder but this is probably the only place I can tell this story with context. It was about 4 or so years ago Christmas day and my mother. Three little siblings, between 8 and 11 at the time, and I were taking the train to the city. Now because of my wheelchair we got seated at the second car of the train that being said the conductor left the door to the cockpit open so my brother could see all the buttons and levers. He had a thing for trains. It was about 30 minutes into the journey and I was looking out the cockpit windows and at this point I saw a man jump from a bridge above the tracks and it was like a human slushy hitting a windshield. I will never forget that. What was worse was the smell believe it or not. Worst ex Mars ever. Ex paramedic student here and not my story but my paramedic teacher told me about her first ride out to a car wreck where a guy in a convertible was high as a kite and thought going 60 miles per hour on a highway that he could drive his convertible underneath a semi slash 18 wheeler. When my teacher arrived on scene she was stepping off the bus when a bunch of people yelled at her to freeze. She stopped. Mid step. And looked down. The guy's head, from getting decapitated was right under her foot and she nearly stepped on it. Bones story. At certain speeds. If you get into a wreck your body just. Liquefies. I remember one particular training session when the body of a motorcyclist was reduced to nothing but a rubber skin suit wrapped tightly around a pole. A friend of mine was an EMT for roughly 10 years. Her most gruesome scene was a group of friends. Couldn't have been older than 21. Had been snowmobiling in the rural midwest. She had been told they were going through an area with significant tree coverage when all of a sudden one of the boys had crashed. Turns out someone had strung steel wire between trees, most likely deliberately to deter injure, and the wire had caught the kid square across the neck. It was an immediate internal decapitation and his head flopped completely backward. She said when they went to move him you could feel the sharp break and hear the bones through the skin when they tried to lay him down. The call that made her quit was a house fire where firemen pulled a toddler out of the house. Deceased and burned so badly her clothes had burned melted into her skin. The fused pajamas were the same pajamas my friend had for her own daughter of a similar age. She went home. Immediately threw out her daughter's matching pajamas. And quit later that week. A cousin committed suicide and the crew left a tooth behind to which his 5 year old son found and kept until his mother became aware. I'm a funeral director. We handled a service for a guy who fell into a hay bale auger. Machine that you put those large round bales in and it chops them up for feed. No recognizable human body parts were recovered. Just goo and fragments. It was truly awful. Every time I read one of these. I'm cop. Fatal accidents are the most gruesome. I saw a father holding onto his dead son. Screaming. His son wasn't technically dead. But he was ejected from a car and hit a brick wall head first. Son died within minutes. Mom was dead. Son was 10. Dad was soaked in his blood. It ung sucked. 
Not that but former first responder. Can't imagine having to clean one up. Dude passed away lived alone had 4ish dogs. I don't remember the amount. Wasn't discovered he passed for over a week. A good friend of mine went to do a body pickup. Man in his 40s was dead on his apartment floor. There was a half eaten steak on a paper plate at his desk. Also on his desk was a computer with a solitaire game mid game on the screen. She has picked up hundreds of bodies and said this bothered her the most. Not my story but a friend who worked in the industry. There was a family murder suicide where the parents took their kids into the garage and turned the car on so they'd all die of carbon monoxide together. This was during the summertime in a very hot southern state. And sadly no one reported them missing or looked into the matter very well. Because they weren't discovered until several weeks later when the fluids from their decomposing bodies began to flow under the garage door and down the slanted driveway. And the neighbors finally figured out something was wrong. When the CSI team got there they found the bodies were severely decomposed. Basically mush. And the scene was overwhelmingly horrific. I can't imagine how hopeless those parents must have felt. And the fact that they weren't discovered for so long because they had no friends or loved ones to report them missing is heartbreaking. So I'm not a crime scene cleanup person but I did work for a coroner's office for a while. I've spoken about it before on Reddit. This one time we went to process a scene where a guy died in his apartment and he wasn't found for 4 days and the heat got up to 100F while he was in his apartment. Needless to say. He had started to decompose. We were putting his body in the body bag and I grabbed his ankles while my partner grabbed his wrists. We go to lift him up and the skin around his ankles sloughs off while I am trying to lift him. Had to adjust my grip to get him into the bag. Meanwhile my partner. Like a dumbass. Is breathing through his nose and gagging every 3 seconds. It was hilarious. I have another story. 2. Maybe I'll save it for another post. One of my friends committed suicide by jumping off of a bridge over a highway and a semi hit her as she was falling. I'm still led up from it. Probably 7-8 years ago. Best friend. His girlfriend and their roommate were murdered 6 years ago next month. My best friend was shot in his face 5 times. Really ed up over that still. I heard both scenes were horrific and traumatizing. So my brother does biohazard cleanup jobs. A few weeks ago he got a call to clean up a suicide. And that it was going to be particularly messy job. As the guy was a 280 pound ex football player. Blew his brains out on the front porch. That's how he found out his brother in law died. Of course nobody else could do the cleanup for some reason. There's more messed up details. But I can't remember them all. Something about a family member going in and getting wasted on alcohol while the blood was still wet. Edit to add. It really ed with my brother, in law. I think the two of them had gotten pretty close. This wasn't his first experience suicide of a family member either. Also. I call him my brother but he's technically my brother in law. And we are close. We've been friends for a long time. It would just be confusing to say my brother-in-law's brother-in-law died. Not any associated profession. But I did see a nolly accident that I helped with when I was in elementary school. So. This guy was doing tricks on his motorcycle while speeding without a helmet and hit a pothole or something like that. Anyway. Dude smashed his head on the street so hard. It scattered for nearly two blocks. My mom drives by and sees my dad on the scene of this gnarly accident. So she pulls over for a visit and I see the body as it's being covered. Literally just the body. Neck down. Dad couldn't make mom take us home. So he went into teaching mode to avoid traumatizing us and had my bro and me search for head pieces. I found a bit of scalp. But human brain has a very distinctive smell. I mostly sniffed those out and signaled someone with gloves to avoid touching hazmat. He'd pick them up and flick them into a trash bag like a booger. Everyone did their best. But dad drove by later and cats were taking care of the missed pieces.